Though the clinch in boxing is frequently thought of as a stalling position, there are lots of good reasons to tie up in a fight. If you follow our strategies here and our tactics for entering the clinch, then you're gonna have success when you fight. Helping me demonstrate our clinch positions today is gonna to be our competitor, Antonio. Let's start by talking about how the boxing clinch is different from the MMA clinch or the Thai clinch. So besides the obvious things of not being able to submit your opponent, choke your opponent, throw elbows or throw knees, there are two rules that govern how we clinch in boxing. The first one is you're not allowed to hold the back of the head and hit. That's why this is called a dirty boxing clinch. And the second is that when both of your arms are tied up, the ref is gonna intervene and break up the tie. With these things in mind, let's familiarize ourselves with the clinch positions we'll be dealing with in boxing. With the overhook, I'm reaching my hand over the top of my opponent's arm. I'm hooking behind their elbow. I'm establishing a safe head position either outside of their shoulder or in front of their shoulder, and I'm lifting them up off of their base so they can't drop down and slide out of this tie-up. To finish this tie-up, I need to get double overhooks. So I reach for his far side arm. I bring my hands together into this gable grip. Just like before, I'm above his elbows. That's gonna give me the most control. And I'm lifting him up so he cannot easily drop his weight down and out of this position. A single underhook has me threading my arm under my opponent's armpit, squeezing tightly onto their shoulder and lifting them up and out of their base. Once again, when I'm here, I'm establishing a safe head position, either outside of their shoulder or tightly onto the front of their chest. If I wanna make this position a lockdown, I need to establish an underhook on the other side as well. So I reach across, I thread up under the armpit, and if I'm just holding like this, I'm using a lot of energy to keep this person in position, and they're gonna fight out. So once again, I'm gonna gable grip my hands, pinch my elbows in tightly and puff my chest up so that this person can't escape from this position and they can't functionally hurt me until the ref comes and breaks up. Our next position is the body lock where I'm changing levels and cinching up around my opponent's waist or hips. It's really important that when I do this, I don't hang out in this position and I quickly swivel behind my opponent or spin my opponent into a worse macro position in the ring. You're usually gonna find the body lock after changing levels. So let's say Antonio throws a four and I step in and wrap up his hips. It's important when I do this that he's on my left side because that protects my liver, doesn't let him wail on me. And it also gives me better leverage to swing around him or to turn him into a worse position where he's on the ropes. So if I throw a hook at Antonio and he establishes that body lock on me, I can use this to establish a dominant clinch position by wrapping up his head and putting him in a headlock. Now, in boxing, I can't sit back and choke him like it's a guillotine, but what I do want to do is I do want to make sure that he can't exit from this position, whether that's by sticking my arm straight down to create a barrier or reaching for his far side armpit. And most importantly from this position is I want to use this to tire out his back. For the briefest of moments when he's in this headlock, I want to drop my weight on him and make him hold my weight. This fries out his low back, it's going to make it harder for him to punch hard and harder for him to defend reactively. It's going to sever that connection between his hips and his upper body. Our final lockdown position is the hug, specifically the arm in hug. This is the weakest option and it's usually used as a transition to a better, stronger clinch. The reason this is the weakest option is because this person can easily break contact. I don't have anything to hold them up by, like their arm or their neck. And because I can't reach my hands together and establish a grip, I have to use a lot of effort to hold this person in position. A lot of these positions can be used in combination. You can have an overhook and an underhook, a headlock with a hook in on one side, a hug on one side and a hook. You have lots of different combinations that you can use that are similarly effective to double underhooks, double overhooks, or a headlock. As long as you establish control of both arms, you've likely done this correctly. All good clinch positions effectively lock down the action and create a stalemate where the ref will intervene. 
Familiarity with these positions and how to establish and hold them is going to give you success for when you fight. There are lots of good reasons for you to try to establish the clinch in boxing. If you're in a bad ring position, you need to change places with your opponent. If you're hurt, either to the head or the body, you need to buy yourself some time on your feet. If you need to tire out your opponent, hang on them, make them carry your weight. If you're shifting gears, clinching, releasing, and hitting, clinching to keep your opponent off kilter as a recovery tactic from a bad position or from a missed punch. If you didn't have an exit strategy when you entered into an exchange and simply as a crime of opportunity, if you have the opportunity to clinch and you're familiar with these positions, you'd be silly not to take it. Our first rule, you don't want to be reaching for the clinch. If I'm working with Antonio and I want to tie him up and I reach out like this, I leave myself very, very, very vulnerable. Anytime your hand is not on your face protecting you, you're vulnerable. And if it's away from your face and it's not even threatening offensively, there's nothing stopping Antonio from shooting and attacking through that space. I'm always going to have more success with our second rule here by getting closer. Closer is better. As I get nearer to Antonio, there is less time for him to hit me as I go to tie up. And the last rule that I want to pay close attention to is I want to get my head off line. I don't have to worry about this left hand hitting me if I bring my head to the far side and then worry about tying up this arm. You're going to have greater success with your clinch entries if you dress them up as you would with an angle. No naked angles, no naked clinch entries. They must all be augmented with something. Our first way to dress up a clinch attempt is from contact. I don't have to reach way out here if I'm already on the inside or I'm already guard to guard with my opponent. So if Antonio and I are already in our inside stance, I'm in contact. I don't have to reach for anything. From right here, I can establish an overhook or I can establish an underhook or I can throw my arm up and over to establish a headlock and I can get this clinch because I'm already touching him. I don't have to cover any ground. So the next way to establish the clinch is just a crime of opportunity. Somebody has their hand in the wrong place. They're pushing irresponsibly. Maybe they're trying to frame on your arm and you can reach over and tie it up. For example, if Antonio and I are in the middle distance and he's trying to push my arm out, I can reach for a clinch from here because his hand wasn't in the right place. He wasn't being responsible with that hand position. And it's very, very likely that if he gives you the clinch, then he's not familiar with the clinch and you should take it. You can also clinch to recover from a punch, whether you land that punch or whether you miss that punch. For example, if I land a six to the body, I could defend myself by clinching and sliding up into an underhook. If I throw a two and I miss it, I could defend that bad position by wrapping up the head and breaking my opponent's posture. You can also use your defense as a segue into a clinch, either while changing levels, like drop stepping into a body lock, or while blocking, blocking high into the overhook, blocking the body into the underhook. Intelligently entering the clinch will elevate it from a stalling tactic to a powerful strategic tool to give you success for when you fight. <laughs> Where I take this arm and I swing around his neck. When you're in this position, <laughs> Quack.